Hey guys, welcome back to Small Engines Questions and Answers with Donnie Boy 73 and today is Friday, March 16th, 2012. And we've got some super nice weather here today. I'm actually filming this a bit earlier in the week. I'll just give you a quick peek outside to show you how things are melting. It's actually 11 degrees today. It's actually supposed to warm up a bit later on in the week, but I'm really happy it's going to be springtime soon. It's a bit messy here in the backyard behind the garage, but that's what happens in the spring is you see all the junk that you forgot there in the fall. But anyways, it's a super nice day and I hope it's the same for you guys. And again, before I start off, I want to welcome all my new subscribers to my channel. I'm going to start off today with another question in regards to my MIG 180C MIG welder. And the question I get sometimes is, can that little welder accept a 10 pound spool of wire? Well, the answer to that is yes. As you can see here, I've actually got an 11 pound spool. There it is right here, or 4.99 kilograms. So this welder is made to take that spool. That's actually a spool made by Lincoln Electric. And when you buy this welder brand new, all they give you are two little small one or two pound spools like this. And they do get used quite fast if you're doing a lot of welding. So I recommend that when you replace the wire in your welder, just buy a 10 or 11 pound spool. By the way, this one's silver in color. This is because it's the flux core wire here. The one on the machine is for solid wire welding, which includes the gas. So that's MIG welding and this is flux core welding. That's why you see a difference in the colors of the wire. A question that comes up often too in regards to MIG welders is, is it okay to use an aftermarket wire for my welder? For example, sometimes you can buy cheaper spools of wire at different stores. Well, my answer to that is, yes, you can use it if you want to, but some professional welders don't recommend it, and the major brands of welders probably would not recommend it as well. And what a welder told me the other day is that if you get a problem, at least if you're using the brand name wire for welding and you have a problem, you can be sure it's not because of the wire. But some people, they just don't want to take the chance. So basically in the end, if you try it and you like it, then that's good. Another question I got the other day from a YouTuber is, is it okay to put away your chainsaw and leaving the bar oil in it for a long period of time? My answer to that is yes, it probably won't matter, but if you're not gonna use your chainsaw for over a year, I do recommend that you drain out the oil as well. The reason why I recommend you would take the oil out if you're not gonna use it for at least a year is so that the oil doesn't get all gummed up inside and plug up the oil line and the oil pump. I have heard of people leaving oil in their chainsaw for years and then they had problems with the oil pump because it was all gummed up. But it's not as serious as leaving fuel in your chainsaw for a while. Like in your chainsaw, I do recommend if you're not gonna use it for at least two months to take the fuel out. But again, with the oil, you can leave it a lot longer than that. I wouldn't leave it for more than a year in my own chainsaw, to be honest with you. And again, this could depend on the brand of oil you're using as well, if it's summer oil or winter oil, which is thicker. Also, the weather conditions in the country you live could affect how quickly the oil may gum up stuff or go bad. So again, these are just suggestions. Some people may have left oil in their chainsaw for 10 years and it was good, and some may have left it in there for a year and it wasn't good. So there's a lot of conditions that can affect this, and again, you do this at your own risk. If you want to take it out for sure right away when you put your chainsaw, then you're sure you're not going to have any problems whatsoever. And if you want to be totally sure what the manufacturer recommends for your chainsaw, then you should contact them and I'm sure they'll be glad to tell you what is recommended in regards to leaving bar oil in your chainsaw. In my next question today, sometimes people ask me if the Tecumseh carburetor bowl o-ring has a round edge or a square edge to it. Well, it has a square edge like this. It's almost like a rectangular O-ring, by the way, here, as you can see. So you would never want to replace this squared O-ring like this from Tecumseh with a regular round O-ring like this. These round O-rings may not seal the bolt properly on the carburetor, and they don't seem to put up well with gas on them all the time. And this is how the O-ring goes. You want to make sure that it's nice and firm around the carburetor body like this. If you put the o-ring on and it's really loose then don't install it get a new one you can buy just the o-ring by the way and it's part number 6310 a you can probably buy this for about two bucks so it's well worth it if it's not sealing properly your engine may not run if it does run it may not run properly 
Lately I've been getting a lot of questions as to what the hole is right behind me here on the ceiling where that plastic is hanging. Well that hole is where my old chimney used to be for my old stove which used to be right here but it's gone. As you guys know I have a new stove over here on the other side of the garage so that's why the hole is left on the ceiling. Anyway so that's what that hole is I'm going to be patching it up uh, later on this summer. And another question I often get is, are those boxes full of chainsaws? Well, the answer to that is no. All they are is full of used parts. As you can see here, I mark on each box what's inside. The one on the left has a blown up Tecumseh Snow King engine. This one is a Briggs, the second one. The other one's a Tecumseh HM80 motor with points. And the last box over there, it's snowmobile recoils. They're really good boxes for storing parts. They're tough. And if you spill a bit of oil inside, they can hang on for a while because the cardboard is much better than like the boxes you get at a grocery store. So no, my garage isn't full of new chainsaws. Approximately two weeks ago, I posted two videos in regards to snowblower electric starters. In both of those videos, I had diagnosed a defective starter and one of them had a stripped starter gear. Now some people were asking me if the ring gear on the flywheel has stronger metal than the one on the starter like this? Well the answer to that is yes. I always find that the ring gear on the flywheel is made of much stronger metal than the gear on the starter. Here's a close-up look of that starter gear. This is from the actual starter in the video that you saw a little while back. I'll post a link to those videos underneath today's Q&A in case you want to go watch them. But anyways if you take a close look you can see the metal inside what it looks like when the teeth are broken. And what I have over here is an actual flywheel from a Tecumseh motor. And you can see that it's made of strong metal and the teeth are in good shape even though this flywheel is probably 20 years old. And from all my experience, I rarely see a damaged ring gear on the flywheel like this. It's usually always the starter gear that breaks first. Now if your starter is loose for a long time on your engine, it can end up damaging the flywheel. I've seen lawn tractors end up getting a damaged flywheel if the owners neglected to check the starter to make sure it was tight on the engine. In my next question a YouTuber asked me when you separate the crankcase on a chainsaw is it necessary to add a gasket sealant along with the gasket when you reassemble it? And when I'm talking about separating the crankcase this is what I mean. These parts here will separate themselves once you have the cylinder off and then you've got this huge part in your hands and there's a gasket in between here. Well, my answer to this question is yes. When I take a crankcase apart and I put it back together, even if there's a gasket that originally goes there, is I add the gasket and a bit of RTV silicone along with it. It just helps to make sure that there is an absolute seal between the crankcase parts. Sometimes if it's damaged because someone shoved a screwdriver to take it off, well, if you add a bit of RTV silicone along with the gasket, it can fill in those little imperfections and make sure that you have a complete seal. If your two crankcase halves aren't absolutely sealed, you can have a bit of oil leak out of the reservoir and you can have a bit of air leaking out of the crankcase, which could cause your chainsaw not to run properly. And some people were wondering what it is that I use. Well, this is what I use. I can use either one of these. The Moto Seal one is more resistant to gas and stuff like that. This one here is also resistant to oil. While they're both resistant to oil, it's just this one is a bit better when there's fuel around. I have used this one in the past, but this is the preferred one to use. And they're both made by Permatex. This one's grain color, this one's black. And here's one last look in case you want to get some for yourself. So that'll be it for this week. I want to thank all you guys for your generosity and your support. I want to thank all the YouTubers who occasionally send me some monetary gifts. It's really appreciated no matter what the amount is. So have yourselves a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.